Now we have Idan Nimso right here with us in the studio to explain, well, just why you started making these videos. I started making these videos just, I was actually abroad when all this happened. And um, I think like all Israelis, I was just kind of thinking what I could do to try to help. And uh, I don't know, I have good English and uh, I thought that maybe I could make some funny videos and that's what I tried to do. Started making videos from abroad and uh, started going pretty well. So just kept at it. One of the things that has struck me is just how prolific the absolute lies and not misinformation, but direct disinformation have been on social media, on platforms like TikTok. How do you confront these? Do you see something that just makes your blood boil and think, no, I'm gonna debunk that? Or do you think, what are the common claims? How can I pre Empt the various claims that might be made. Is there a strategy? I think it's it's more of the second part of what you said. It's more of taking the the basis of the Palestinian you know lies that are being told and trying to debunk debunk them one by one. If sometimes there's something that is you know very um, outrageous that happens, like the you know the context with the American colleges, I'll make something that's specific about that. But I think that uh, the more important thing to do is just to debunk the lies that are at the basis of the Palestinian. Uh, the Palestinian, pro-Palestinian ideology, you know. Is there a methodology in your videos? How do you think you can communicate with people at the most fundamental level that they're going to listen? Yeah, actually, I think all of my content stems from, the way that I kind of approach this is that I thought that if I was not Israeli, if I was American or something else, to be completely honest, I probably wouldn't care that much about what's going on because people, you know, care about their own lives. And the only way that I would actually be intrigued into like wanting to go and, and, and learn about this stuff is if I was actually entertained by it. And so what I try to do is to hook people by entertaining them um, and then, you know, educate them through that. Um, I try to make the video something that I would want to watch myself regardless of the conflict. And, um, and that's kind of how it happens. And then you just start thinking of okay, people like humor, people like music. How can I use that and uh, insert the, the specific arguments into there? And that's what I do. One of the challenges that I've observed since the start of this conflict and looking at much of the propaganda is a lot of the positions that people take and hold extremely close and extremely fervently are not positions they've been reasoned into. They've been emoted into them. They've been narrative into these positions. How can you use reason? Because I see you lose a lot of facts and data in your videos, but how do you use reason to get somebody out of a position they never reasoned themselves into in the first place? I think that's a that's a really good point, and that's that's exactly what is at the core of my content. Is that, like you said, a lot of the um, a lot of the Palestinian propaganda is not it it, it is an emotional. Um, they, they try to get you at an emotional level, not a logical level, and that's also what I try to do in my videos. So I do use reason, but the I, I use humor because I think humor opens people up to uh, understanding new ideas, and I think that's the best way to kind of convey messages, at least for me. Um, and yeah, so I try to, to, to use humor and just as you said that they're doing to us, do the exact uh, same thing to get people on an emotional level. People also like um, things that they can relate to that entertain them. Um, and so that kind of comes first and then I try to insert the reason into there. Now before this started, you were not a content creator at all. Right, yeah. So is this something that you see yourself pursuing in the long term or is this something that only for the duration of the war because you feel a need for it? That's a good question. I actually don't know. I think we'll we'll have to see what happens, but uh, so far it's going good. So I think we're just going to keep doing it, and uh, and we'll see. Now, of your videos, the most popular one was you responding to the "Go back to where you came from" claim. One point eight million views. It's only been up for a few days at this point. What are the lies, the claims, the narratives that really make your blood boil and make you feel no? I have to respond to this. <sighs> I try to do it less emotionally, usually, and I think that what is a great source of fuel to understand what things we need to tackle, you get by reading the actual comments and engagement and, and things that on, on your post. So a lot of the things that I make are things that I see people commenting on my post. So like, you know, go back to where you came from, um, I don't know, like the, the, the poor, you know, um, Hamas doesn't indoctrinate children, all these kind of things that I see and I say, oh, that's obviously false, I see a lot of people you know, saying this, and that's a good kind of uh, way to gauge what people really think, and that's how I try to tackle things. Do you get a lot of hate comments? 
Yeah, but um, I think everyone does, and I think that you can't really run away from that. And I actually try to use the hate comments for for laughing at them and try to make uh, you know content out of that and make the best out of it. Um, I was just you know I'm, when I look at creators that I really like, even some that don't do anything that have to do with with the conflict, just like Jewish creators, I see how much hate they're getting for not even mentioning Israel Palestine just for being Jewish. And I say, okay, like some things you can't win. You're always going to have people that uh, that you know hate in the comments, so you might as well enjoy it. So now that you have become very popular, are you going to be creating a more strategic approach to your videos? Are you going to be going and thinking, optimizing, how can I reach the most people? Um, yeah, I hope so. I mean, it's all, um, what I've noticed and what I think is really um, interesting to know, especially for you know, also other people who are creating content about uh, the war is that it's, it's very key to create, like there's, there's a game of volume versus quality and quality wins by a mile like if you pref like a, the, the difference between like a 70 to a 90 video is like like a, out of 100 let's say is big but 90 to 93 is also really big and 93 to 95 is huge like it's exponential so i think that you do need to systemize it in the way that you can pump out a volume of content but it's always most important to focus on the quality of it itself and um that's what we're going to keep trying to do do you find yourself getting dragged into these sort of online wars, or do you simply just channel it into making videos? You don't get bogged down in the comments section. I do. I do get bogged down. I think everyone does. I think it's a it's a human uh, it's a human thing. Um, but I'm trying to you know be strategic with people that I respond to, and and to really you know make it not not fighting with people, but but educating them through the comments. Do you have a favorite platform? Do you have one you think is the most effective to work with? I think they all serve different purposes. I mean, for the younger generation, which is what I try to create for, it's, it's going to be Instagram and TikTok. And, um, you know, Twitter is good for older folks. Or, um, but, yeah, right now I'm on Twitter and, uh, sorry, I'm on Instagram and uh, going to be getting into TikTok and Twitter soon. So. Given how much absolute bloody ignorance there is out there, <laughs> if you were to make a recommendation of, you think, the most important reading list to assemble for people in the West that don't know anything about the conflict, what would it be? That's a good question. Um, I don't have a specific one top of mind, but what I would say is that it's important to follow creators from both sides. Reason being is even if you don't agree with what they're saying, it will open up your feed to receive uh, both sides. So, so when I started making content, I didn't see any pro-Palestinian stuff. Now I do. Um, and it's good to you know see both sides, and that's what I would start with. Well, thank you very much for the work you're doing. Thank you for being in the studio with us. It was a great discussion. Thank you.